So I would like to ask uh, Aldric Vignon to join me now because it's going to be time for our synthesis. So, you know, I'd like to hear your reactions after all these uh, exchanges we've just got. Uh, thank you, Ave, for, uh, for giving me the, phone, the, the, the mic back. Um, it has been a, a wonderful journey from the first round table we concluded yesterday and this final one. So I'm pleased to have the opportunity to bring you uh, some of my insight uh, on investing in new technology. You've just led a, a wonderful conversation which has brought uh, a lot of content and some concrete example of technology disruption in the business and also toward procurement activities. So uh, the move to digital is now up and running and is strongly accelerating in a fast and changing uh, environment. So when we link procurement to digital, uh, we are, from my view, uh, facing uh, two different situations. Uh, the first one is around the impact of digital and procurement way of working and performance, and I will elaborate on this one. And the second one is also the ability of procurement to bring new digital services to the company uh, to support the business. So let's be on the first one uh, around the digital impact on procurement way of, of working. So I'm, I'm fully in line with uh, Ed when uh, he talked about visibility. Many companies are still lacking vision on the supplier's network as a whole. And I've noted that the ones uh, which have saved properly over the last year in the storm were the one with an integrate and really digital view on supplier data and supplier network. So I must confess that procurement digital roadmaps are not always clear and sometimes are really focused on transaction without any vision. Um, vision described by, by Ed uh, a, a few minutes ago. So I think it could be a good start to start from transaction, but for sure data is key and supplier network should become a must. Um, I have also noticed that data was part of all the conversation we had yesterday and today as well. And, uh, but how far can we go into transparency without losing traction for efficiency? I think that's what Ed said. So how to explain that investment in technology for procurement are not at the right level in many companies. So if I'm a little bit provocative, I must say that uh, HR, finance, they have often more budget to bring digital into their practices than procurement. So there are still some work to do here to convince where to put uh, the effective money. I would like also to uh, highlight the challenge of data continuity from product design to suppliers through manufacturing and finally to customer. Uh, this continuity will bring lots of value to the whole ecosystem. But how many systems and interface to go through? And who is in charge of all this complex stuff? So I guess that could be one of the stakes for procurement and supplier relationship in the future. My second point is around the uh, the supplier business model uh, major shift. Um, it was mentioned by Clyde, but finding suppliers, new partners to support the business is, is as usual part of the mission of procurement. And some organization are already uh, today installing some kind of routine with their existing suppliers portfolio and the way they were used to introduce new sources to the business. So now scouting, e early uh, dis discovery, deep market understanding are now put into the light more than before. And uh, with the supplier model disruption we are facing from product sales to uh, service delivery, I think procurement skills should evolve to support the business changes. So it requires several uh, competencies and skills such as uh, uh, technology understanding, um, working with unstable specification, uh, we need to have improved IPs capabilities, and it has been uh, mentioned during the roundtable. Legal uh, understanding the legal impact of all these new contracts, the data, GDPR, etc., and also understanding the impact on the business. So the end of uh, of the chain. So it has been confirmed by Clive a few minutes ago. That's really key today. So technology could help procurement to drive all those activities but i think from my perspective that the real barrier is the mindset the mindset of the of, of the buyers so understanding the new suppliers business model and the benefit it could bring to the company is now i must say mandatory there is no option so but let's be clear it's a complex task i think to understand all the underlying risk and consequences of the technology choice 
uh, made by the supplier, the impact on the company uh, technology choices, and eventually on the customer ones. So, Hervé, that, that was my, my two cents. So, do you have any other insights you would like to share to close this uh, round table? Yeah, thank you, Andrik. You know, I think it's um, we need to reflect on the meaning of digital technologies on uh, on you know our economies, on our society these days. And uh, I think that we've been hearing about the uh, the uh, two companies, and these companies are part of a of a very big movement that's really putting out software out of uh, the equipments, out of infrastructure, out of product. And what we see happening is really the emergence of a, of a software-defined world, of a world where software is orchestrating, you know, human activities and the economic, but also on our day-to-day -day, uh, level. And I think we need to, you know, really pay attention and understand how much our contribution is coming from digitalizing our procurement process versus you know, supporting companies gaining access, you know, to the capabilities that help, you know, build this uh, uh, software uh, defined world. Um, data is used now in uh, real time, sometimes to automate uh, actions, sometimes as we've seen as part of the uh, COVID period to uh, enable flexibility, repurpose what we have in terms of digital assets to quickly make a difference, but also to augment human decisions, to help all of us take better uh, decisions. And uh, we've seen you know, quite a lot of examples from uh, this throughout the two days and more specifically in the last uh, hour. But I think we need to you know, really see this process emerging. It's not about little islands, but it's a, a big hole that's uh, being through uh, this process. And data volume, data veracity, data variety, data velocity, and we've heard it, data security will be paramount in this transformation. Now that transformation procurement has a pivotal role to play uh, in it, um, because, and we need to be min business minded uh, to make it happen. All of this technology, and it's not just like a software, but it's also a connectivity technology. It's also hardware. We need to bring them together. We need to build new architectures that are supporting the business going forwards into this different world. And some of them are not coming from the traditional supplier. Maybe if we simply want to digitalize an existing uh, production process, if we want to digitalize some of the uh, you know, more administrative process, that can come from our traditional supplier. But in order to be able to truly make you know, business model transformation, thanks to digital, that really requires to go and build connections, build relationship, build trust with unfamiliar partner. And we had outstanding example from both speaker uh, on this different uh, element. Um, most of the digital solutions, we need to understand what is really bringing us a true added value. What is making the difference? What are the elements that we should be uh, keeping control of and making sure that we can recreate this form of a vertical integration at the right point into the value chain? So ensuring we get some form of exclusive access to some of the asset, but not trying to control everything else around. You know, there's plenty of capabilities out there that are you know, leveraging open source hardware, open source software, and, and you know, a new set, a new world of capabilities coming from the digital giants that we need to be able to harness while making sure we retain control on what is really making a difference from a business point of view. And this will lead us to see the fifth generation of buyers you know, span their wings, being able to, you know, bring some of their suppliers to visit some of the customers and clients, creating within the ecosystem, you know, the right exchange, the right, you know, mix and melding of knowledge coming from the supply and the demand side. And this is very exciting time. This is very interesting 
developments that uh, we can have in front of us. And yes, we'll need some very uh, key skills for that. But I think I would also concur to what I've heard today earlier. Uh, a lot of the people we have working with us, working for us, have that capability. They've got that desire, not just to, you know, procure something, but to contribute to the business, to contribute to society. So again, that's really exciting time for all the buyers around the world to be part of that change. Thank you. Thank you, Abby.